Faith changes things. Faith is the most subtle power on the face of the earth because the natural man can't see it. It slips up on him. Who could have ever believed that a man like Abraham, living in Ur of the Chaldees, could ever become such a, a hero of faith by traveling up the, 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 fertile cir the fertile circle and coming around into the Holy Land and there establishing himself as a man that 4,000 years later, the whole world would be talking about him. Uh, faith is a tremendous force. And, and uh, if it was easy to handle, and if it was easy to define, a lot more people would have it. We say faith is simple. It is simple. It's simple complex. Uh, men that work in electronics keep telling me it's simple. Well, I, I appreciate that very much because I can't get a hold of any of it. And I don't know anything about it. It's fortunate that I can put on a microphone. And when I look at all that electronic uh, mass of, and maze of, of things, I say, whoo, I'm glad somebody underst understands it. We don't want faith to be that way in your life. We want faith to be reduced to simplicity as far as we can because faith can change your world. Now, if I were a person of no experience, then we'd have to teach you uh, these, these, these lessons from, uh, in an academic way, from what others have said and what others have done and, and so forth. But this is not an, an academic presentation. I have, I have seen faith function in my own life. Whether I especially like it or not, uh, history will record me as a man of faith. Whether I have designed it that way or whether I have nothing to do with it, actually. Because wherever I go, they say, would you teach me about your faith? And I say, uh, my faith, you know? I I'm, I'm taken by surprise uh, because I, I don't feel that way about myself. But whether I like it or not, the, this, this generation has branded me as a person of faith. And if that be true, we had better study the subject. And we had better look into it, and we had better discover all the things that should be discovered and put into action all the things that must be put into action. And all the people said, may I read to you from the book of Romans, uh, chapter 10 and verse 17, that says, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So faith has an area from which it comes. It does not, <laughs> it does not come from reading the funny papers and the comic sections. It does not come by reading history. It does not come by reading poetry. Faith cometh by hearing the Word of God. And if we can get the Word of God to, to, to be pouring through our total beings, it will attach itself to us, and that force is called faith. As we look into faith, uh, some of the remarkable uh, summations that we come to is this. Faith has no limitations. Now, you are the only person that can limit faith in your life. And it's just the devil that wants you to say, oh, my wife's to blame, uh, my, my husband's to blame, uh, my parents are to blame, my, my children are to blame. No, you are to blame. You are the owner and the possessor of your own faith. You are the extender of your own faith. You are the projector of your own faith. Faith knows no limitations. It's very possible that no human being, whether it be Moses, whether it be Abraham, or whether it be any of these mighty men of faith, no one has gone to the extent and to the perimeter of the possibilities of faith in his own person. That means that every one of us, every human that has ever lived, could have gone further had he wanted to, had he given himself to it, had he permitted his insides to reach out and to reach out again, and to reach out again saying, I'm reaching for something. You usually get what you reach for. And we ought to look and see what we have because that's what we reach for up until this moment. But from this moment, we can reach for something new. Faith has no limitations. You are not limited by what you can receive through the power and the force of faith. 
God has not placed any limitation there that confines you to any area. All that you can believe for, you can obtain, you can get. If you will say, Lord, I will not be limited. I'll not be limited by my own mind, by my own thinking. I'll not be limited by my own feelings in my, in my, in my solica parts. I'll not be limited by my own willpower and willing to do my own will. I will release myself under the structure of faith and I will have it, and you will get it. If you believe it, say amen. amen. Not only does faith have no limitations, faith knows no boundaries. We often, we often think that faith has walls. It does not. Whether these boundaries be racial, I wouldn't want any black man to ever feel that he couldn't get anything any red man already had. The total Bible is written by Asiatics, by Asians, not by, not by North Europeans. The Bible comes out of the spirit of people that we call today Asians. They all came out of the, the, the continent of Asia. And so the Bible is not a European book, but it's not an Asian book either. It's a God book. And faith, faith is not an Asian faith. They say you can have the Asian flu, but you can't have the Asian faith. Uh, faith refuses to recognize boundaries. Uh, whether these boundaries be racial, the greatest moves of God today on the face of this earth, among the brown people, or you may call them the yellow people, in Indonesia, they're having a thrust of God that's unreal. In the Philippines, the Philippines have a constant roaring revival with tens of tens of thousands finding God all the time. And their hearts are just still open, waiting for somebody to tell them more about it. South Korea is so open to the gospel un until it is simply in in incredulous, the amount of good things that are going on in that country. And so we can see that the power of God and the blessing of God refuses to be uh, circumvented by, by any kind of boundaries or held down and held back by boundaries. Also, whether these, it refuses to be uh, confined to economic boundaries. We often say, because I'm poor, I can't do this or that. That's a lie. The, 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 the people that have gone the, done the greatest on the face of this earth ha, have been people that began with no economic background whatsoever, no securities of any kind. They, they created this thing as they went through the principles of faith, through the power of faith, to the strength of faith. They, they created something as they moved. Nothing could hold them back. We also would like to say that there is no religion that can make a boundary for you. I am so hurt by religion, and I ought to be honest with you and tell you about it. Uh, God told me, spoke to my heart, and said when he judges, when he judges religion on the face of this earth, that he will judge the Catholic Church, the Episcopal Church, the Lutheran Church, right along with the Holiness Churches and the Pentecostal groups. And I said, well, Lord, how can you judge them all equally? And God said, they all do the same thing. And I said, what is it? That they seek to control my servants and they seek to control my money, my finances. And he said, it doesn't matter which denomination you reach or what you speak about, they all wish to do the same thing. And just yesterday on the, on the telephone, I spoke to a friend that wanted to return uh, to, to the Holy Land, uh, to Israel, to, uh, to, do, to do missionary work. And, and her denomination uh, told her, said, you cannot have any uh, relationship with any other group. Uh, you cannot minister for any other group. You, you cannot be putting out advertising for any other group. And they confined her. They confined her if she was to be back and to be recognized by them. I, I never said a word to her because I didn't want to further discourage her. But inside of me, I said, isn't that wicked? And isn't that awful to think that we can set up our own boundaries and tell God, hey, God, you got to work in here. The powers of faith, my friend, will not 
ever be circumscribed by anything human, anything natural, anything denominational, anything religious, anything economic, anything in a sociological world. Faith knows no boundaries. Now, if you don't get it, you won't get faith. And if you don't believe it, you won't ever have faith. Faith refuses to sit down underneath you and you sit on top of it. Faith is a runner. It's always in front. Uh, faith is something that, that you, you have to move with all your might to stay up with. It's a leader. Faith is a leader. Faith will take you out beyond your mind. When that axe head went to the bottom of the Jordan River and the poor little Bible school boy came running over to Elisha and said, Oh, behold, 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 look at there. I've lost an axe head and it was borrowed. Just like a Bible school boy. Uh, it was borrowed. And I, and I won't have anything to take it back. Here was a man that refused uh, even to permit the natural laws. Uh, even the laws of gravitation. He said, gravitation, you have no force of power unless I say you have it. I will, I will move your force, and I will remove your power, and I will bring an axe head, iron head, up out of the murky, muddy waters of Jordan. I will cause it to come up and to come out. Huh. You don't do that by, 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 by quoting the, the religious beliefs of your church. And you don't do that by wearing a long coat that goes down to the floor with your collar around backwards. That won't ever bring iron up out of the bottom of a river. If you don't have the powers and the force of faith to believe and to know that you believe and that you are a believer, it won't work. But faith refuses to recognize boundaries. It will not do it. And so in faith, you love everybody. You appreciate everybody. You accept the power of God wherever it is. You know, some people say, oh, that's not the power of God. It didn't happen in my church. What does your church have to do with it? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Say nothing. That's what we're talking about. Just nothing. The power of God is God's love. And God's love is everywhere. And if you will open up your, your being, your spiritual being, and say, Lord, I'm going to trust. And I'm going to have the right attitude. And I'm going to learn. Faith has no limitations. Whew, that's big. Faith has no boundaries. You set all the boundaries that your faith has. Don't blame it on anybody except yourself. You have made your own boundaries. Cut them loose. Break them down. Burn them up. And then faith can move in areas that you have never, never realized before. In the third place, faith accepts no compromise. Faith sets no com been compromise. Politics compromises. A lot of religions compromise. Tens of thousands of pastors preach what they know the people like. They study it out. I've been accused of studying and always saying what they don't like. I, I don't know. I hope not exactly anyway. But faith knows no compromises. When you get into a feeling of compromise, you're out of faith. You're in the doubt. You're in the fear. See? Faith knows no compromises. Faith knows no fears. Let the waves roar. Christ will say, peace, be still. Let the demoniac scream. Christ says, sit down. Give him a coat. He's naked. It's all taken care of. Faith refuses to say, listen, I'll do this if you'll do that. It won't do that. Faith will move without compromise. It knows the truth, and it will live in truth. It will project truth, and it will not compromise. So many people today are saying, can I do this and get to heaven? Can I do that and get to heaven? Well, you might, but you won't get there in faith. Faith knows no compromises. Faith is like spring steel. It stays where it's supposed to be, right in the middle of the Word of God. Hey, that's a good place to be, isn't it? in the middle of the Word of God. Faith knows no arbitrations. You don't deal with faith. You don't say, now listen, I'll have a little faith if you'll have a little mixed in. God says, nope, nothing doing. Faith is pure. And if you're going to have faith, you're going to have the whole thing or you won't get anything. How many are glad that faith knows no compromises? 
Denominations compromise to fit the times in which they live. Faith is the same today as it was in Abraham's day. Same today as it was in Moses' day. Faith knows no compromises. Faith ref refuses no arbitrations. None at all. Faith functions and operates in a spirit and a spirit-filled man and a spirit-filled woman and in all the functions and the operations of faith we have recorded no failures the three the three Hebrew children uh, they, they, they didn't come out and have to have a hairdo their hair wasn't scorched they didn't have to come out and say, well, we better send our clothes over here to the cleaners. Uh, says they don't smell good, but in the fire, they smell good. We have no failures related to faith. We have no defeats related to faith. We have no cowardice related to pure faith. Faith is a power. Faith is a strength that no coward can attach itself to. If you read the history of the martyrs, you'll find that faith dies joyfully. Faith sings on its way to the burning flames of persecution. John Bunyan will tell you that Pilgrim's Progress is written in a dungeon where he was 12 years in prison for preaching on the street corners of Bedford. And out of that dungeon came the most powerful book except the Bible on the face of the earth, the Pilgrim's Progress to Heaven. He kept his faith in jail. We hope that all of us will have pure, unadulterated faith and that you and I will understand and know faith that will change the world in which we live today. Faith knows only superb fulfillment. Faith lives in joy. How many believe that? <laughs> if you're not happy, you better check it. It may not be faith. You've got it all. Maybe doubt. Maybe fears. Not faith. Faith lives in total joy. You see, that's a lot of words about faith. I'd like to say that no tongue, no tongue has ever been able to give a full and complete definition of faith. We only know this. Faith in the hands of God is so pliable that faith in one life will do what it cannot do in another life without faith. So you can live together in the same house and a man can have it and a woman not have it. Children can have it and their parents don't have it. I'd also like to say that faith has no patterns. You can't live like Dr. Oral Roberts, Dr. Billy Graham, or like Dr. Moses, nor Dr. Joshua. And every single person of faith begins to function in, it does a different thing than it does in another. That has been the amazing truth of faith in my own heart. That faith functions one way in one person and another way in another person. There will be no person in this whole class it can say faith function in me like it does in you. No, it doesn't. God's ability to bring faith into our lives in a unique way are so great that he can have four billion ways of bringing faith into the people on the face of the earth right now. If you're glad for that, say amen. So we need to learn how to obtain faith. Then we also need to learn how to retain faith in our own heart and life. Now, I'm sure that what we must be kind enough to tell you is that there are degrees of faith. Uh, for example, there are measurements of faith. The Word of God teaches us that every man is given a measure of faith. And when you're born again, you're given a measure. And that's yours. There are some people that 10 years later, they still got the same amount, the first little measure. They have done nothing with it. They have not exercised it. 
If you leave a muscle like that, you'd only have a string bean there. If you were to leave your legs like that, they'd be about that big around. Faith in our hearts is to be exercised. Say exercise. Every day you don't use faith, it shrinks. Faith is a commodity for use, not for a little golden box that's close it up and say, yeah, I've got faith. You've got a box that's empty. And so faith is for us to use it, make it a value to us. We all start with a measure of faith. The Bible says there are those who have weak faith. Sometimes we discriminate because a person doesn't have a lot of faith. Uh, we, we, we push him down. If he's got any at all, thank God for him. Romans 4, 19 says, And being not weak in faith. Weak in faith. It says, He considered not his own body as dead. Speaking of Abraham. When he was about 100 years old. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Not being weak in faith. I am sure there are times when God wants to do something of a tremendous nature, not able to do it because they had faith. It was a, I wouldn't want to call it sickness of a faith, but it was a weakness of their faith. Don't let your faith be weak. Let your faith do something inside of you that will make it strong. I want to give you several of these. There are those that have what we call little faith. In Matthew 8 and 33, 23, it says, when Jesus was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him, and there rose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waters, but Jesus was asleep. His disciples came unto him and woke him, saying, Lord, don't you care that we die? <laughs> and he said to them, Why are you fearful? Oh, ye of little faith. Well, they had a little faith. They were out there. You know, most of the folks weren't even there. You can laugh at them and say, Oh, they didn't have much faith. Well, you weren't even there. You know, sometimes we, we, we ridicule a man because he doesn't exercise faith. If you were in his boots, you may be in the same mess. He, he may be going through something harder than you've ever got into yet. And, and so don't, don't be hasty to, to down him. If he's got a little faith, say, Lord, help him to put some more in it. Help him to do something with it. Thank God for the little faith. Don't stay that way in Jesus' name. And all the people said... In 2 Thessalonians 1 and 3, there is growing faith. It says, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth, groweth exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all toward each other, it aboundeth. And so here we find a growing faith. It says, your faith is growing exceedingly. They must have been, they must have been young converts. The old ones don't seem to grow exceedingly anymore. They get rusty and crusty and, well, let's don't go into that. It don't have to be that way. Your faith can increase until the time you go home to be with God. And it says that they were growing faith. <laughs> How many like growing faith? Growing faith. Every day of your life, talk to yourself and say, hey, am I growing in faith? Is my faith growing? If it isn't, let's work on it. Then the Bible tells us about a strong faith. It says that Abraham staggered not, but was strong in faith. That's Romans 4.20. Was strong in faith. Strong in faith. Staggered not with the promise of God through unbelief. Strong in faith, giving glory to God. Strong faith. I mean, you, you thank God for that kind of faith. It just stands like a mountain. It stands and stands and stands. The Lord Jesus said in Matthew 8 that a person had great faith. Now, that's certainly better than, than growing faith and little faith. And, and Matthew 8, 13, 8, chapter 8, verses 5 to 13. When Jesus entered into Capernaum, there came a centurion beseeching him, saying, Lord, my servant lieth homesick of palsy, grievously tormented. Jesus said, well, I'll come and heal him. The centurion said, Oh, Lord, I'm not worthy to come under my roof. If you will speak the word only, uh, it will be done. I'm a man under authority such as you are. And when I speak, the man goeth, and I, and I say, Come, he cometh. And he said, You don't have to go unto my house. And Jesus replied and said, I have not found so great faith, uh, no, not in Israel. Did you notice that? He could have said it this way. 
I've never found such great faith in church. I had to go out to the pagans to find it. Here was a Roman, a Roman officer in the Roman army. Sometimes you find faith in the most unexpected places you can imagine. You find real, raw faith in a place you weren't expecting, in a person that you didn't expect to find it in. You say, hey, how did faith get here? <laughs> well, it's not been circumscribed and circumvented, you see. God puts it anywhere it's open. Anywhere it's open, God will put the faith. 